The views expressed on the following program do not necessarily represent those of this station or its management. It's time now for Where You Live with Gene Sullivan, the show that deals with the news and events that affect you the most. Whether you rent or own, live in an HOA, single-family home, or an apartment building, Gene will tackle the issues right where you live. So, from the True North Painting Studios, here is the original man of steel, Resolve himself, who stands for truth, justice, and the association way. Here's Gene Sullivan. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Where You Live. I'm Gene Sullivan, and I'm broadcasting from the True North Painting Studios. When you're looking for the right painting contractor, what do you look for? Isn't it someone who will respect you, your time, your property, and your budget? That's what you can expect from True North Painting. Find out more about this exceptional company by going online at truenorthpainting.com. That's T-R-U-NorthPainting.com. Or give them a call at 952-831-1433. I'm also brought to you by the great folks at Extreme Exteriors and American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency. And as always, I couldn't do this show without my uh, faithful uh, producer, Christopher Wyatt Earp Huberty at the board. How are you, Chris? Good, Gene. How are you doing today? You know, I was just thinking, here we are, the beginning of August. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it it, it sure seems like it, because it seems like Summer really only started a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately true, yeah. Yes, and now, and now, as soon as we get to August, the first thing I th- start thinking about is the state fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, not that far away. Yeah, it's probably, what, three, three and a half weeks away. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think three weeks from Thurs- this past Thursday, yeah. Yeah, and so, and so here we are, and uh, we're going to be fortunate to be uh, broadcasting live at the Minnesota State Fair. Uh, on our Saturday morning program. And we also have the privilege, I think, for the fourth year now in a row, uh, we are going to be uh, doing, uh, during the drive home time, I think it's going to be the last hour of Michael Medved's program between 4 and 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, And we will be uh, broadcasting live at the Minnesota State Fair. So this will be an opportunity instead of recording the show uh, on the week for the weekends like I, I normally do. This these will be live shows. So please come on out, see me at the state fair. Uh, love to have you ask questions. Uh, call. Uh, we'll have a, a phone number for people to to call in a, as well. It's always a lot of fun. You'll be actually out at the state fair too, won't you? Uh, the first Saturday will be. Otherwise, we'll be back here uh, kind of holding down the mothership okay. a little bit. Now, when you were in Indiana, did you always go to the state fair there? I went a few times just to go when I was little. Then I wor- when I worked at the TV station in college, we had a booth kind of like we do up here that I had to man. So okay. I haven't gone to the state fair as a patron in quite a while. All right. Now, you know, usually I, I get uh, we get kind of, uh, uh, I guess, spoiled because the state fair is in the Twin Cities. And, of mm. course, between Minneapolis St. Paul, you've got half the population of half the state right there. So it makes sense that the state fair is going to be there. From where you grew up, how far was the state fair? Uh, hour-ish. Just an hour. So yeah. that that's not too bad. No, not bad at all. I had one buddy who came from uh, Indiana, and uh, they I think he said he was like four or five hours away. Oh, but he made the trip? But uh, his dad, his senior year, allowed uh, my my buddy and a couple of his friends <laughs> to uh, have the pickup truck for the weekend and to uh, spend it by themselves at the Minnesota State Fair. Nice. And all kinds of hijinks ensued, that's for sure. <laughs> I believe it. Yes. But uh, so uh, what's one of your favorite things to do when you're- At the fair? Yeah. Oh, eat. Without question, eat. Without, well, yeah. And without. there was a couple years ago a, a show with these little tiny dogs, all these weird tricks. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And my wife's a huge dog lover, so it's adorable. It was, it, it was a harmonic convergence of all. <laughs> it was of all that is uh, important to the Huberty family. Exactly, right cute dogs and food. That's about it. <laughs> that sounds good. Well, hey, we've got a lot to cover on today's show, so uh, let's begin, shall we, as we always do, with property management in the news. 
Property Management in the News is brought to you by Home Furniture and Abbey Floor Coverings. Their showrooms are staffed with professionals who will help you choose what you need to fit both your lifestyle and budget. Whatever you need, chances are they'll have what you're looking for. Now, if you wish to avail yourself of special pricing you're not going to find anywhere else, all where you live, listeners, call Customer Service Coordinator Lori Matson at 952 952- Two two four two six six three. Our first story is uh, coming out of uh, New York City, and this is from the Fiscal Times. <clears throat> excuse me, just about uh, a week ago. Now, I think uh, a number of people know that uh, New York has uh, a a new uh, a new mayor, uh, Mayor uh, Bill De Blasio, and uh, the mayor had uh, a very important inaugural address that he wanted to make. This was his pledge throughout his campaign, and uh, that was that he wanted to end the glaring what income inequality that was taking place in the city. And let me give you a quote. This is a quote from his inaugural address to uh, the uh, people at New York. He said, uh, and I quote, that New Yorkers see our city not as an exclusive domain of the 1%, but a place where everyday people can afford to live, work, and raise a family. So keep that quote in mind as we deal with our first story, and that is the city of New York uh, developing uh, these super luxury high rise apartments. And uh, they have certain sections of the building that are designated for low income families. And that happens in a lot of um, in apartments uh, here in the Twin Cities. Um, you'll see that with single family homes that are rented out. Uh, homes are made available with the help and assistance of the city. People usually get tax breaks for being able to do that. But in New, in New York, when they develop these new high-rises, they have something very interesting. The front door are for the rich, and the back door are for the poor. That's right. That's exactly what I said. And so uh, the idea of uh, the mayor and his uh, inaugural address, I want to stop. He said the income inequality that's taking place. Boy, I, I was just amazed when I heard about this story. And that's exactly what's uh, happening right now. So in New York's uh, uh, big high rises that are just going up, they are, have an issue because uh, for the lower income residents that live in these buildings, they segregate them from their rich neighbors. These are called poor doors. That's right, poor doors. There is a separate entrance for poor people, usually located in the back of the building, out of view from the upper class tenants, so that the upper class tenants in the same building do not need to rub shoulders uh, with them at all. As a matter, there are amenities that the buildings will have that the rich tenants and renters will have access to, but the poor uh, renters who are living in that same building will not have access to them, will not be seen uh, by uh, the, the rich people. And so it said, last week, the New York Department of Housing, Preservation, and Development approved a request by a swanky new condo on the Upper West Side to have separate entrances in a back alley, in a back alley, I can't believe it, for its lower income residents. And this would be people that have an annual income of less than $51,000 a year. The front doors will be reserved for the wealthy tenants only. The proposal is a part of this city's program called, get this, the city is calling this the Inclusionary Housing Program. Can you believe it? I mean, when you think of the word inclusionary, don't you think of 
being welcoming, that uh, you are in, including and you're, and you're bringing in other people. But in this inclusionary housing program that the city of New York is touting, which gives tax credits and other benefits to big real estate developers in exchange for making some of the uh, units there affordable housing, they have been allowed, they have been allowed by the city's, um, by the city to be able to have this kind of exclusion where you could have the uh, tenants separated uh, depending on uh, their uh, income bracket. Well, what does this mean? What is going on here? We're going to take a look at this in further depth. We're going to take a break right now. So don't go away. A lot more of where you live on AM 1280 The Patriot. Back after these messages. 